kapastusan itong ginagawa ng CHED. E kung mag-slash sila ng budget ninyo na pinaghirapan nyo po yan na i-formulate kung ano yung nakakaganda para sa mga programa ninyo, sa ahensya ninyo, and then i-slash na ng CHED ng ganun-ganun na lang without even telling you why and how and the reason really bakit they come up with this decision na para mag-slash ng budget. So kapastusan itong ginagawa ng CHED, Mr. Chair. So luminitaw, itong CHED, CHED thinks they're God. They can just do anything they want without explaining, without explanation. Yes, Parang they, they think they're God. Can Senator I ask Dufa question? is recognized. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. What challenges usually uh, do you encounter uh, being an attached agency of CHED, especially in terms of budgetary? Uh, our budget, really the budget being assigned to us by the Department of Budget and Management uh, on the basis of the presentations of CHED has been very minuscule. Uh, there was a year, I think this was in 2016, where we received a budget of 5.4 million pesos from the DBM. And for the many years, we've been receiving on the average 20 million pesos. And that is really, really uh, very, very insignificant. I think insignificant is not even the word for us to survive as the agency supposed to be in charge of monitoring and supervising legal education. Uh, we have received a letter sent by the CHED to Chair Popoy William Del Rosario, and we were furnished a copy of that letter. And therein, the DBM said that we are... Um, identified as a program of CHED, specifically uh, development of excellent centers. That is why the budget aligned to, uh, assigned to us is always small uh, because of that. The budget assigned to you, to you, to the lab, is small. And, and who determines as to how much budget would you receive for a certain year? Kayo ba yung nagbibigyan ng program sa kanila nung maging budget ninyo? Or sila na lang na decide for you? We submit our proposed budget every year po, and it goes around 200 to 300 million. And CHED, and po nila yon. CHED determines internally our budget. So when they present it to... Uh, DBM, it, it appears that it's slashed to uh, a mere 20 million. So, ano pong justification na binibigyan nila sa inyo kapag in-slash po nila yung budget, yung proposed program na ipinisinta nyo sa kanila for your budget needs for that year? So, wala po sila binibigay na reason? Wala pa, wala pong binibigay na reason. The only reason we, may say, they were discovered was that through the letter of CHED to DBM that we are categorized for the last, for all these years as a project of CHED and not as an agency attached to CHED for budgetary purposes. So, hindi po kayo nagpa-file ng motion for reconsideration, if you will call that, if you can call that, na para i-challenge sila na, teka muna, mga taga CHED, ito talagang kailangan namin and we, we know better than you kasi kami naman talaga ang nandito at uh, ang nagpapagod at gumagawa ng trabaho at hindi naman talaga kayo. Hindi po, kasi po, um, uh, first of all, we don't receive any feedback from CHED on how... No feedback whatsoever? No feedback whatsoever. They just, they just flush the budget and then they don't, they don't give you the courtesy of letting you know, hey, we flush this because number one, itong reason, number two, ito, number three, four, wala, walang ganon. Hindi po, and not only that... So um, disrespectful itong mga taga-CHED. Sa inyo, kaya tama <laughs> right, talaga, maghiwalay-hiwalay na, maghiwalay, maghiwalay, na magsulian na ng kandila. Oh, po, kasi there was even a time... Uh, Pastusan itong ginagawa sa inyo ng CHED. I would not disagree with that, Your Honor. There was even a time where uh, now Speaker Martin Robaldes, formerly the Majority Floor Leader, uh, instructed or I think uh, sent a letter to Ched after we had seen him to increase the budget of the LAB to give additional 50 million that fell on deaf ears and recently Congressman Honorable Congressman Rufus Rodriguez also during the budget season asked Ched instructed Ched to give additional again 50 million again that fell on deaf ears so we didn't receive any more than 20 million uh, for this year as well what could be the reason but you know to send you and Ched siguro po marami I'd like to think that marami lang po talaga silang ginagawa but then again they if that goes on, wala na rin po kami magagawa. Sila marami, pero kami, wala kami magagawa. I understand what you're saying and where you're coming from. Ang sa akin lang kasi, Mr. Chair, kapastusan itong ginagawa ng CHED. E kung mag-slash sila ng budget ninyo na pinaghirapan niyo po yan na i-formulate uh, i kung ano yung nakakaganda para sa mga programa ninyo, sa ahensya ninyo, and then i-slash na ng CHED ng ganun-ganun na lang without even telling you why and how and the reason really bakit they came up with this decision na para mag-slash ng budget. So kapastusan itong ginagawa ng CHED, Mr. Chair. Kaya talaga, ang aking request, eh, magkahiwalay-hiwalay na kayo. Eh, kumalas na sa CHED. Kung ganito rin lang nangyayari every single year. Tama? Every year, ganito na lamang? That's also our hope, Your Honor. So, let me tell you, Ched thinks they're God. They can just do anything they want without explaining, without explanation. Yes. Parang they think they're God. Um, with the permission of um, Senator Tulfo, maybe clarify, kanina nyo sinasubmit yung budget nyo? We submitted to Ched po, Mr. Chairman. And it's Ched that submits the budget? Yes. Of LEB to, to the, the DBM. DBM. Apo. Um, number two, for the information of Senator Tulfo, kahit sinong congressman at senator pwede magdagdag sa budget. But when they ask CHED to add to it, it means CHED should subtract from its existing programs. Kung kaya kang kumuha ng pondo para magpagawa ng kali sa isang barangay, but hindi kaya kumuha ng pondo mula sa ibang items sa budget para bigyan kayo ng 50 million. Um, can we hear Senator Tulfo from CHED? Yes, uh, pero prior to that, ah, uh, before continue, that, sorry, okay. sorry, so yeah, I follow what uh, Senator Chis, thank you Mr. Chair, na after you submitted your proposed budget to CHED and then CHED was submitted to DBM, right? And saan po nanggagaling yung pag-slash? Would that be from CHED pa lang, in-slash na o pagdating sa DBM? And then kapag na-slash na ng, halimbawa, DBM nag-slash, does DBM inform CHED, the reason? And then CHED should inform Leb. Go ahead, CHED, please. And, ako nasa sagot ng okay. Senator Tulfo. Thank you. Because I was Chair of Finance you. for several years. Okay. Actually, DBM gives a ceiling or budget cap for each agency. Each agency will make of a dream scenario sometime this time of the year, February. Diba? Budget call na yun eh. 
So magsasabihin sila ng mga pangarap na budget ng kada ahensya, LEB included, SHED included, which would run in the billions. In the case of um, LEB, which would run in the hundreds of millions. And then DBM, between February and um, May, will sift through it. They will go back and forth with their respective agencies, trying to haggle and discuss within their respective caps kung ano yung ilalagay, isasama, hindi isasama, dadagdagan, babawasan, and this would all depend on the priorities of the President, given that it's the President's budget that will be submitted to Congress. Mm. Once it's submitted to Congress, um, you're correct, sir, it has been a practice na pag binawasan, tinatanggap na lamang ng mga ahensya yun, um, hindi pinagawayan yun, hindi kinakwestiyon, they just accept the fact that that was the ceiling given to them. And there have been several conflicts between, for example, Congress, the Senate, Supreme Court, the Independent Constitutional Commissions, whenever their budgets are slashed by DBM in the Executive's um, proposal um, with respect to the proposed GAA. But at the end of the day, um, it is not discussed. LEB is not unique. Um, it's not discussed with agencies why it was slashed, what was the purpose why it was slashed, only that you have to work within these limits. Now when it reaches Congress, we have the power to reallocate these funds. We don't have the power to increase the budget, but we do have the power to reallocate items included in the budget and place it wherever um, we may propose and vote upon by plenary. So yun yung kwento ng budget. Malungkot, pero yun yung karapin. Pero Mr. Chair, tama nga naman kayo, and then they have the right to slash according to uh, what the President would dictate. Uh, pero sa akin na naman po, uh, bilang kortesiya, at least man lang itong mga agency na na-slash yung budget, must be informed para malaman nila kung saan yung uh, parte ng na, na, na hiniling na, na budget ay, uh, ay hindi na pala dapat kailangan pa o kailangan magtipid sila sa, sa, sa uh, particular uh, uh, line of budget na kanilang na-request. Kasi naman, Mr. Chair, sa pagkakalam ko, pag mga favorite agencies, eh, hindi na-slash yung mga budget. Uh, 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 hindi na po ako mag-mention. Isa lang naman ang favorite agency <laughs> Ay na po magbanggit, Mr. Chair. Meron pa iba na hindi ini-slash, pero pag yung mga hindi paboritong agency, islash na islash. Yan ang nakalungkot pa, Mr. Chair. Pag paborito nila, kulang pa to, dagdagan niya pa to. Pagdating sa, ano, nadadagdagan pa. Pag, di ba? I like it, Rick. Dr. Tulfo, it's okay. AFP modernization is always increased year on year compared to the previous year's proposal. DPWH budget is increased year on year compared to the proposal submitted by the President. The same is true for UP, including PJH. In the example, year on year, it has been increased example, compared to the proposal. Example, DPWH, pataas na pataas. Kaya nga po, tapos yung mga kalsada, panipis na panipis. Habang tumataas ang kanilang budget, numinipis yung mga kalsada, substandard yung mga ginagamit ng mga... Naman, umiikli lang. Well, tama ka dyan, sir. Uh, chairman, Mr. Chairman. Umiikli, numinipis na. Umiikli na, numinipis pa. Yun yun eh. And then, sila yung tinatambakan ng napakarami bilyones na budget, samantalang mga itong mga agency na equally important as well, eh, inislas ng budget at will. Kung kailangan na gustong islas, mag-islas lang sila. Yun ang fortunate na kalungkot, Mr. Chair. I promise, Senator Tulfo, that we would sit down soon because one of the main reasons why, one of the major reasons why I think it's easy to source out funds is if you look at the absorptive capacity of the agencies, sa laki ng mga budget nila, hindi naman nagagamit, pwede naman gamitin yung fiscal space mm -hmm. to fund, for example, LEB or other um, concerns. For example, Ewan ko lang, under the helm of Secretary Vice President Sarah Duterte, the school building program is um, delayed by two years. Mm. We allocate approximately 30 billion every year to build new classrooms, pero delayed siya um, by two years. Sayang yung fiscal space of 60 billion, hindi naman pala nila may implement this year. Ede, tanggalin na muna this year, gamitin na muna nila yung pondo last year, implement it. Then you have that space that you can reallocate. And that happens almost every year. Kaya lang, pangiting na, dahil slash mo yung school building program. But then again, hindi naman nila mga gastos talaga. That's why year on year, we keep on extending the validity of the budget because they can't implement the budget. Um, I'll answer you, that. Mr. Chair, they were given the budget that they requested, just like you mentioned, sa uh, DepEd, hindi nagagamit, whereas itong ibang mga agency tulad ng LEB, nagsubmit na sila ng budget na kailangan na kailangan talaga nila, and yet in slash. Yung mga hindi na nga kailangan, nagsubmit na hindi na talaga pala kailangan, hanggang sa naging unutilized yung budget na ibinigay. E nasa sayang. E sana, ibinigay na lang sa mga agency tulad ng LEB, na every single cent ay magagamit nila ng budget na yun, na isinabit nila. I will work with Senator Tulfo to see that that will happen in the 2024 budget because 2023 budget is too late already to um, change or discuss. It can only be done via supplemental budget, which is rarely done, if at all. Um, but to answer, Attorney Bad, the reason is all of a sudden DPWA is required soil testing. Before the construction of any school, soil testing must be made and therefore, nagturuan sila, saan kukunin yung perang dyan? Wala naman dun sa program. So nagturuan sila ng mga isang taon sa walang nagawang bagong school in the middle of it, nagpalabas ng bagong order ng DepEd na dapat maliwanag na nakatitulo yung lupa ng skalahan na tatayuan sa DepEd. Eh ang problema, mga 80% ng mga lupain na doon saan nakatayuan yung mga skalahan na wala na nung principal na nagretar yung titulo, uh, dinonate pero nawala na yung deed of donation. So legally, they cannot construct the school building on this parcel of land that is not yet titled in the name of the government. So, yan. Inang... Galing mo, Mr. Chair. Tama ka naman. Expo sa yun. So we passed a law on the titling of um, DepEd lands and authorizing them to expropriate, but it's still taking them time. I think they're at only at 30 plus percent as of last time I was here, three years ago. Um, pero tama naman, baka, baka magpagawa ka ng school building, binabawi ng mga eredero nung nag-donate na namatay na yung lupa. So baka sa dulo, manalo sila, may building yung pribadong may-ari ng lupa, na walang tayo ng building. So dapat, from, from the moment na i-donate yung lupa, agad-agad magpalabas ng deed of donation. Meron, pero nilalagay ng principal sa drawer niya, pag-retire niya, 
wala nang may alam ko nasaan yun. There is no procedure in DepEd. I'm talking three years ago, um, Senator Tulfo. By which these documents are collected and gathered and actually processed with the a, with a, with a ending goal and end goal of actually having a title and the name of the So, dapat makasuhan yung principal, uh, Mr. Chair, kung tatanungin. Kasi kapabayan yung ginawa niya. Na she knows better. Na that's a sensitive document. very important document. Na dapat sinasabit sa DepEd. Tumbuhay pa. Tinatago dapat at meron dapat isang uh, safe doon na doon ilalagay yung mga... Kung tayo pa yung principal, Senator Tulfo, pangalawa, dinonate ng barangay captain nung tumakbo siya, nung natalo, binawi na. Um, ang daming mga malulungkot na kwento tukol sa dinonate, sa provinsya. O dinonate na matagal ni Yorme, ni Go. O dinonate as natalo, dun sa barangay na yun, yes. babawiin na. O exactly. namatay yung mayor and kapitan, yung mga kamag-anak, yung mga hmm. anak, yung mga apo, naghirap ang buhay, gusto nang bawiin. Um, so, maraming kwento. But the question, uh, Mr. Chair, wala bang budget yung DepEd para sa pagbili uh, uh, ng mga lupa na, na it itatayo ng mga school buildings? It's a matter of allocation. Uh, at the end of the day, governance um, is about allocating scarce resources. If you are able to allocate scarce resources, then you govern properly. Um, that is always the challenge for each agency. That is always a challenge. The challenge for Congress, how to allocate. Palagi naman kulang yung budget eh. Wala pa yung budget na sobra, siksikat liglig eh. Lahat ng budget naman kulang eh. So our challenge is, paano pa tamayin? As I discussed earlier, I'm willing to work with Senator Tulfo in order to find the necessary fiscal space within the 2024 budget in order to fund the requirements of the LEB. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can be Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate that. Narito ang inyong mga comments sa ating mga video. Lahat po ng newsflash video ay makikita sa aking newsflash playlist. Sa mga gusto naman po ng mga biblical topics, punta po kayo sa aking channel na Mahafri TV. Para sa mga gustong mag-order ng Firmax Firmang and Lifting Cream and Immune System Booster, contact Mr. Dante Merivilles on Facebook. Cell phone number 09086553757.